One of the most discussed topics in astrophotography is calibration. The process of cleaning up your light frames to stack them. But there is lots of confusion about these calibration frames going on. So let me clarify these mysterious images. Hi Astroaddicts, my name is Tim and welcome back to Astroaddict. Over here you can see a small list of what I will talk about. You can skip right to the part you need. I will explain all of this for DSLR users. Every one of you who has a dedicated astronomy camera, I doubt this video will be very helpful. So let's get going. Taking an image of deep space is not like taking a picture of your cat. The exposures need to be long, guided, with high ISO and maybe through a big lens or telescope. And there need to be lots of them. All of these difficulties contain lots of problems, which we have to handle. Let's look at this basic setup from left to right. As the camera reads the data from the sensor, there will be a small amount of noise injected into the light frame. It is known as read noise, and we will counter it with bias frames. No camera is perfect, and there will be dead pixels on your sensor. A long exposure also contains a lot of dark current, which gets worse as the camera warms up. We will counter these errors with dark frames. There will not only be dead pixels, there will also be hot and cold pixels. These pixels do either react too much to incoming light or too little. Also, your entire imaging rig will have scratches, vignetting and dust, which can be seen in the final light frame. To counter these errors, we will take flat frames. And at last, to detect the difference between hot and cold pixels and the sensor noise, we will take dark flats. A calibration frame for the calibration frame. Did I mention that this is a very sophisticated hobby? It's in the name. This picture is taken in complete darkness. Put the cap onto your telescope or the cap onto the camera body. The rules you have to follow. You have to shoot with the same exposure time as your light frames, the same ISO as your light frames, and the most difficult thing, the same temperature as your light frames. The sensor temperature is very critical for dark frames. The hotter the sensor, the noisier your image is. That's the reason why most dedicated astronomy cameras include a thermoelectric cooling to get the sensor to sub-zero temperatures while imaging. The best time to take dark frames is right after imaging, for example when you are breaking down your rig. To get only the read noise into an image, you need to take a dark exposure with the fastest shutter speed your camera can do. With the cap on the camera, take short exposures. The fastest shutter speed of a camera is usually 1 over 4000 or 8000. The bias frames are not temperature dependent, you can take them at any time. You only need to take these images once, the master bias frame can be used for about a year actually. So could the master dark, but keep its temperature dependency in mind. This is the most difficult frame to get used to. You need to take an image that only contains the inside of your telescope and the camera. This image will contain dust, vignetting, distortion and all the other bad things. Every part of your aperture must be evenly lit by a plain light source. Possible ways to do that? Strap a white piece of cloth onto your telescope and find an even light source. A street lamp won't do. If you can, point your telescope to the dawn blue sky after your imaging night. But if you have to break down your rig like me, and you have to take these flat frames at night, there are other ways. I put a white piece of cloth onto the telescope and then put a tablet onto it. The tablet will display a white image and with that I have an even light source. I've also seen people using flat artist tablets, which can be dimmed. The exposure time can vary from setup to setup. No part of the camera sensor should be lit more than 80% of the full range. Play around with the exposure time to find an histogram right in the middle of the camera range. You have to take them every imaging night because the dust in your sensor and your telescope can move around. They are not temperature dependent and the color does not matter. Most of the times my flats look rather blue because of the filter. But that's not a problem. To give you a starting point, with my DSLR the exposure time was usually 1 over 20. The ISO does not really matter, but to be sure to get all of these hot and cold pixels, use the same ISO as in your light frames. Another reason why you have to take them at night after your lights. You have to shoot them at the same focus as your light frames. If this one piece of dust is not focused as in your light frames, it will look horrible. These frames are very easy to take. Just shoot a dark frame with the same ISO and same exposure time as your flat frames. That's it! Just like your light frames, the calibration frames are stacked before use. These stacked images are called master files. 
And the big question that everyone is always asking, how many single images do I need to take? There's a lot of heated discussion about that topic. But I'm very sure that no one will disagree when I say more is always better. The minimum number for each type of correction frame should be 20. Take my advice. If you use less than 10 dark frames, for example, you can ruin your final image. Just like the master light frame, the master calibration frames will get better the more frames you pour into. In the times of DSLR, I took 20 for each type and it was good. And now in the times of the dedicated astronomy cameras, I take way more. Since I'm able to prepare dark frames before the imaging session, I take hundreds of calibration frames for each type. I already have a master dark and master bias library for each gain and exposure setting that I'm normally using. My master bias frame is made out of 1000 single images. Do you want an example why more is always better? Most of you out there are probably using Deep Sky Stacker. It is very simple to use your calibration frames there. Just click the load button and the single images will be imported and made into master files. The master bias and dark will be subtracted from the light frame, the dark flat subtracted from the flat and the flat will divide the light frame. And with that your final calibrated images are done. To counter the noise created by the Bayer pattern of your camera, use dithering. If you need a tutorial on that, I highly recommend the Do We Even Dither video from Dylan O'Donnell. I will of course link it in the description. To achieve longer exposures, use auto guiding. Handle light pollution. Focus your stars pinpoint sharp. Learn how to utilize stacking to its full potential. And if you want more kinds of these videos, consider subscribing to this channel. Just realized that this is the first time that I asked for subscribing at the end of a video. I have a very big deep sky project planned and I am very excited about that. Here is a little teaser that is entirely misleading. I want to get at least 10 hours of RGB and another 10 hours of HA and maybe I will squeeze a little bit of O3 in there. But until that time, clear skies and may the night be with us.